All right, in this video, we are going to create some hamburger menu animations. Actually, we're just gonna create one for the tutorial because it does take a little while to get these things created. When I got the request for the tutorial, I was thinking, well, what is a hamburger menu? So I Googled it and then I said to myself, yes, I have seen these before. KOWP, the advanced editor, has a hamburger menu icon right here. And notice right now it's three stacks. Think of it as like a bun, a bun, and a hamburger in between it. Um, you can have more lines if you'd like. If I open something in my preset, check it out. It animated to an arrow. If I tap the arrow, it animates back to the hamburger icon. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. And when I got the, I wanted some inspiration for different ones to make. I didn't want to make just one. I want to show you some things you can do. So I went to Google. I typed in hamburger menu animations, and I just went to the first link I saw. And then I this code should be popping up, but we don't have to use any of this code, the HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. However, I just started looking at some of the ones they have down here, and I, once I, you can click on all these, by the way. Uh, this one right here, it's like a bun, a bun, and a hamburger. The two buns look like they collapse to the center, and then the X pops up. So that's what we're going to achieve, and as a matter of fact, I have that one made already right here. And that's not the smoothest looking thing on the computer screen right now, but it is smooth on my device. And if we're smart with our number of global variables, we can adjust the speed to get it the exact thing we want. So that's that one there. The one that I got a request for was for an arrow, something kind of like what you saw in KOWP. However, notice my arrow is a little bit different. Now, again, it's not smooth on the computer screen right now. My computer, I hear my fan running, so it's not going to emulate this thing perfectly, but it is smooth on my device. And then I have another one up here just for, you know, showcasing things, different things you can do. We have like an X, and then we have the two buns kind of scaling out horizontally, or heck, you could just clip this thing and have them scroll off. So that's the thing I'm going to talk about here. The one I want to recreate in this video is going to be the arrow. That's the request that I got. Now this one does not look like the one in KOWP, the little animation with the arrow, but in all honesty, I, I think it looks just fine. Now when you make these, you're going to want to make them a lot smaller than what I'm doing right now. And to get a little bit more inspiration, if you're getting into this material motion, go over to material.google.com, click on the motion and material motion. And I mean, the, the transitions here are phenomenal. Uh, there's actually software made for doing this stuff. We're just doing this on a, what, $3, $4 app off the Play Store. It's amazing. So here we go. Let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial. So I'm going to recreate the arrow one here in this video. And then I'm going to share this on KOWP Toots as well. So feel free to get these other ones and mess around with those as well. So in KOWP, the green is the one that I'm going to mess with. But before we do that, let me show you a few things. Since we're going to be re recreating this one here, or somewhat recreating it, um, there are some things that we're going to create. Three globals. The on-off switch to actually trigger the animation. And we're going to do some speeds. Now watch this. I'm going to jump, take this speed one and I'm going to bump it on up. And watch what happens here. Did you notice that? The buns animate a lot slower. All right, let me cut the bun. I guess we can call this bun speed or whatever. But uh, now let me cut. Let me cut this one up a little bit. Watch this. The buns are going to be fast, but now the arrows slow. So if you're smart with your animations, you can actually sit here and uh, take some speeds and use different speeds throughout the entire animation. Something that looks a little bit nicer if you read up on the material motion is you want these things to be relatively fast. Something like that, okay? So for my tutorial, I've done those three things. Toot go, that's my on off switch. Toot speed one, toot speed two. All right, and we're gonna recreate this up here with this little um, piece that I've already kind of pre-made. Toot top, toot mid, toot bot. Toot top is gonna to be, let me zoom in, it's gonna be that top one that you see there. The green ones are the ones that we're gonna be focusing on. Toot mid is gonna be the middle one. And toot bot is going to be the bottom one. All right. Before we jump into this, what we want to create is a button. So I'm going to plus. I'm going to, go to shape. I'm going to add a square. And I'm just going to make it something roughly like that. But now I want to position this. Let me come back to my mouse. I want to slide this on down to where it's pretty much covering the entire uh, menu that I want to animate. So something like that. I'm going to go to its paint. Let's just see if it's centered. It don't have to be centered perfectly. 
But uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Basically, this is going to be our button. But what I want to do to this button is I want to make it completely transparent. That way you do not see it. But it's there. And now we don't see it. So whenever we touch this square, we should trigger our global variable. So I'm going to go to touch for that button. I'm going to go to plus, And I'm going to, where is it? Uh, toggle global switch. And I'm going to do two go. All right. So let me go ahead and save this because that zero, I don't know, I don't know if you noticed that, but it was a zero hanging out in my advanced editor. See that zero right there? What the heck is, oh, okay, that's what it is. The zero is there because I was zoomed in. I didn't know what was going on. But anyway, we have the button, and now we can toggle that global switch by touching anywhere inside of that square we just created. So let's focus, let's use this one as a template, and notice we have some things happening. The, the bun is scrolling down. I'm going to focus on the top button. It scrolls down, and then it turns into an arrow. I have all of this. This thing here controls the arrow head of, for the top part, at least. So let's go ahead and go to Toot Top. Let's go over to Animation, and let's add our first animation. And that is going to be uh, React On. We're always going to react on the global switch, Toot Go in this case. And now let's just play it to see what happens. Okay, it's scrolling off the screen. I want it to collapse down. So to do that, I'm going to go to the angle. And since uh, I have this just a regular scroll and everything, if we put this at, I think, 90 degrees, this will actually uh, scroll down. So I'm just going to type in 90. And let's see what happens now. Okay, it does go where we want it to go, but it goes way too far. So let's go to a speed. I'm going to come to speed, and I'm going to type in that toot speed 1. So... Uh, GV toot speed one. That's what I called it. And I am obviously right now I guess it's set to one. So I created that number global variable and you can adjust those however you want. But let's play it now. And it's going to do this. Uh, oh, 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 my bad. That is not what I want to do. I want to leave that. I don't want to put that speed on that one. I want to put the speed on the duration. My bad. So come in here to duration, let's come into here and let's do that same code. Uh, GV toot speed one. All right, we should be good there. Let's play it and now it's gonna go all the way down because that amount, the amount is what I put, or the speed is where I put it at first. I wanna bump this speed on down. Um, let's put it at 10 and see what happens. Okay, 10 puts it at a good spot. But you may say it's coming down past through the middle. Well, there's two ways we can do this. We can either adjust the speed um, by doing some fine tuning. For example, if I come in here into this and I put it at, I don't want that toot speed one for the uh, duration. If I put in like an 8.5 instead of 10, watch this now. That green slides right down and covers over it. Okay, we can do that or we can apply a clip. And actually, I still want to apply a clip and you'll see why right here in a second. But actually, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty good with the way it scrolls down and it looks like it just became that bar. So we're good with that one. And now let's add another animation. We want to rotate it. So react on global switch. Let's rotate based on, uh, let me make sure I'm going the right way. So let me go to rotate and let me just press play real quick and make sure it's going to rotate the right way. If I want the arrow to point in this direction, kind of like recreating this one, I'm going to want to make sure I pick uh, rotate inverted. And let's go ahead and adjust the amount of rotation that we want. Now, the amount of rotation, if I do 50%, Think of this as like percentages. So at 50, this thing should rotate to a vertical position. Oh, my bad, no. What am I talking about? 50 is just gonna make it do a 180 degree rotation. 25 is gonna be the vertical rotation. So let's play that now. So as you can see, it does do pretty much a vertical rotation. It's not exactly vertical because I didn't have it set to 25. Well, I don't want it to do that. I want it to rotate right about here somewhere. So if you take 25 and you divide it by 2, that's going to give us 12.5. And I'm going to type that in. So let me come here and type in 12.5. Check. Let's play it. Boom. So I want that to be my arrowhead. All right. 
Now here's where we're going to have our, our first little issue. We want these two things to happen, but we don't want them to happen at the same time. So what I want to do is I want to come down here to the delay, and I want it to, okay, well, first of all, let's apply some duration. How quick do we want it to do the uh, rotation? I'm going to do the GV toot speed 2. So GV toot speed 2. And that's going to take uh, two tenths of a second. That's really what that means. But now, I don't want both of those things to happen at the same time. Watch this. What's going to happen right now, if I press this button, it's going to scroll and rotate at the same time. You see that? I don't want it to do that. I want it to rotate after it's scrolled down. So what we're going to have to do on this rotate inverted animation, if we come down here to delay, what we're going to have to do is... And we've got to come back in here and change this in a minute as well. I told you this gets a little bit crazy. Um, what we want to do is we want to give it a delay of how long it takes it to actually scroll before it rotates. Remember, the speed, the duration on the scroll, the duration on the scroll was GV to speed 1. So what I want to happen here is I want the rotation to wait until it completes that scroll where it collapses. And the scroll duration was GV to speed 1. So now if I come up here and press this, it should scroll and rotate. Boom, boom. Good, perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now we've got to come back in here in a little while and change some more codes as well. But for now, I want to go ahead and get this going to where we can go boom, boom. And now, what do we want to do next? We also want this thing to scroll yet again. So I'm going to go add another animation, react on global switch, and to go. Now we want this thing to scroll not this way, but this way. That way the arrowhead is going to point. So I'm going to go ahead and do the angle. The angle we want is going to be 180 degrees. thought I could nail it right on the head because I've done this so many times, but couldn't. All right, so let's just test this and make sure that it is going to scroll to the left, which it does. That's way too much. The duration, what do we want this to do? I want to use GV toot speed 2 for this as well. So basically, GV toot speed 2. What's going to happen here? Basically, I want it to rotate and do this scroll right here to the left. I want it to rotate and scroll at the same time. So we're going to have to do something else as well. We're going to have to come down here. I'm not going to do that yet, though. Um, this is where we got to fine-tune a little things, a few things. Speed. I'm going to cut this speed on down. And let's see what we got. Okay. Now let's play this animation and see what happens. Let me reset it. Okay, boom. All right, notice it's scrolling too soon. Maybe for, for me it's scrolling too soon because it's doing down and as it's going down, it's starting to move to the left. That gives it like a cool curved style animation, but I want to wait on that, so I need to apply that delay. I want this scroll that I'm going to the left, I want it to delay and wait until the collapse is done. So it's the same thing I did for the rotation. GV2 speed 1 is what I want to delay. I want it to wait until it completes the collapse. Now watch this. That's all I've changed. It's going to collapse. Then it's going to rotate and scroll to the left. Boom. See that? Now, what we have to uh, manipulate here is we have to sit here and try to figure out how far do we want this thing to go. Well, I need to bump up the speed just a hair. So let's try it at 12 and see what happens. Oh, never mind. I got to press this button to make it do all this. All right. So starting, let's see. See how it's still showing a little bit of that rectangle right there? So I need to bump it up a little bit more. Let's go to 13. And I'm going to go up to 14. That should be good enough. All right. Now you might say, okay, this part is showing. How do I get rid of this part? Now we're ready to tie in a clip. We're going to worry about how to make this thing come back in a moment. I, I don't want to do too many things at one time because this is probably already confusing you enough as is because there's so many animations going on. But what we want to do is we want to clip this thing here so that we only see, you know, for right now, I want to see all of that. But when it drops and it rotates, I don't want to see this diagonal part. I don't want to see that part right there. So we're going to have to apply a clip to all of this. So let me add a shape. And to not get these mixed up. This is my button. 
and this is going to be clip top. So toot, clip, top. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change its color to something slightly transparent. That way I can get this lined up. And I'm going to come to its shape. I'm going to bump this size on up to, let's see, maybe something right around, okay, 200 to 220. I'm going to bump it on up to 220 because this thing is going to, uh, let, let's keep it at 200. Let's see here. All right, position. I'm going to slide it down. And basically what I want to do is I want this thing that's going to ultimately be a clip. I want this thing to, let's try it right there and see what happens. Now what this is going to do, it's actually going to, if I go to FX, I go to Mask, I go to Clip Next Module, it's not going to clip anything right now. Notice the color went away. All right, we're going to have to do some adjustments right here in a minute. I'm going to take that Toot Clip Top, and I'm going to move this up above the Toot Top rectangle. So I'm, oops, slow down. Come down one more. Gosh, no. I'm going to take why is it doing this? All right, I'm just going to use my finger. Okay, oh, it's where it needs to be. I want that thing. Now, look at what happened there. Did you see that? Let me take this toot top. If I slide it here, it's going to bring the arrowheads back, that arrowhead. Boom. See how that arrowhead's there? But if I put that toot clip top right above the toot top, so notice where it is. Boom. I got toot top there. It's going to clip that thing, and that's exactly what I want. Let's save this. Let's go back to the home screen. And notice what's happening now. A moment ago, you saw the arrow, the part of the arrow down here, but we've clipped that out. Now, something else you may notice too is like, oh, it's not going back the same way it came. Well, that's something we've got to fix in a little while. For now, I want us to focus on only trying to get the arrows going. Well, that is perfect. That's exactly what I want going on in regards to collapsing and making the arrow go to the left. All right, so going back into KOWP, I want to do this same thing with the bottom one. Now here's where you can save a little bit of time. If I take toot top, the thing that I've already created, if I copy it and I paste it, and I'm going to delete the toot bot that I have down here. Um, basically I'm getting some of the same animations. All right, so I'm gonna rename this to toot bot because now I'm creating my bottom one. We just got to remember where each piece is. So toot bot I want to change its position, and I want to bump it on down to keep everything uh, proportional. So bumping it on down, I think right there is going to do it. All right, and this isn't going to look right at first, but we can. We, all we got to do is fix a few things. So here we go. Let's see what happens. See that? See how both of these are doing the same thing? Well, I definitely want to change the way this thing scrolls, but it's just a matter of reversing a few things. So the first thing here, remember how this top one, it scrolled down. Well, I want this one to scroll up. So I'm going into that first animation I created in Toot Top, except now I've copied this to Toot Bot. I'm going to go to Scroll. I'm going to leave all the, the codes that I have in here, all these numbers, I'm going to leave those alone. And I just want to change my angle to, I think it's 270. That's going to fix the first piece. So let's check it and see. This one should go up. Yep, perfect. All right. Now what? Rotate inverted, the one from Toot Bot, when it rotated inverted, now we just want to do rotate because we want this to rotate in the opposite direction. And I think everything else is going to be good. The reason why the scroll is good, this other one that scrolled to the left, well, I still want this one to scroll to the left, so we should be good to go. Boom, yep. Now you may notice, uh-oh, we got this arrow piece over here. Well, what we're going to have to do there, y'all, is we're going to have to apply another clip and we're going to have to put that clip around this area. That way it blocks off everything up here above so you don't see that piece, this piece right here. We want to block that out. So we have to apply our clip. So let me copy and paste the M clip top. Copy, paste. I'm going to go to, oh, I don't want to do that. That's the wrong one. I want to do two clip top. So copy and paste that. And I'm going to change this to toot clip bot for the bottom. That way if you download this from KOWP toots, you'll know exactly uh, or somewhat what piece goes where. So toot clip bot. Notice you got that red rectangle right there. Well, I want to position this a little bit differently. I'm going to bump 
it on down a little bit and I'm basically gonna put that clip right there where it's on the edge of that middle bar or the middle uh, hamburger piece to our hamburger menu animation so if I save that I go back to the home screen we should be good to go um, oh nope no we're not because I have to actually apply that clip in the right layer of our root so I want to put that toot clip bot I want to put it right above toot bot watch what happens when I let go see toot bot that's this one right here, watch, it's going. that part right there is going to go away. Boom. All right, let's save this. Let's go back to the home screen. And now, the okay, the first part, this part here that we're getting ready to animate is going to do pretty much everything we want it to do. Boom, boom. See that? Now, that part right there, maybe you like that. Maybe you're okay with it being like that, or maybe you want it to do, now notice this one. When this one animates back, the arrowheads fold back down. You notice that? Whereas this one's not doing that. It's kind of just basically uh, doing the same animation all over again. So that's two different ways. But let me come in here and show you some things with the speed. Let's go to toot speed one. Let's bump it on up. This is going to make it collapse slower. Watch this. Collapsing slower and then our arrowhead. All right. So that's where the toot speed, one, toot speed one and toot speed two come into play. Animating slow when it collapses, but it's fast there. Now watch this, slow, fast. That's not really that bad. I mean, we don't have to reverse the animation. Since this video is already getting relatively long, I'm just gonna let it be like that. But what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to reverse those delays. Um, I've mentioned that in some of my previous tutorials anyway. Uh, check out my video on alternating delays to get it to not do this, but do collapse arrows now it's going to do arrows and collapse back boom boom you see that has like reversing the animations whereas this one here it's just doing collapse arrow now when i press it it's going to do the uncollapse and then the arrows are going to fall back that still doesn't look bad though i'm going to lie to you i'm going to pause the video real quick i'm getting ready to have some company i do want to show you the tip of the arrow because notice this arrow here does not have a tip if you're okay with it not having a tip that's fine if you want it to have a tip like this boom hang out you won't even know i'm gone all right so right back to it uh six hours later which was probably only two seconds for you but here we go so we want to add that tip to the green arrow. Um, that way we can get something looking like that little sharp point there. We have to get that, and this requires a little bit more um, add, adding a few more pieces and clips as well. So what we gotta focus on first is trying to create, here's how I did it at least. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it, but this is the way that's going to work. Uh, this is the way that worked for me. I'm gonna add a triangle in here. So let's go to plus, let's go to shape, and coming on down to the bottom, this is the one, and I'm going to rename this to Toot Pointer. So Toot Pointer. And this shape needs to be a triangle. All right, and I'll worry about adjusting the color in a second. All right, let's go ahead and position this thing. I'm just going to bump it on down. Let's put it where it's approximately, okay, that's right there smack in the middle, and I'm going to move it on over here. All right. We're going to, have to do some rotating on this thing, and we're also going to have to do uh, some adjustment. This is going to be a little bit of fine tuning, so this is a little bit of trial and error here. Now, that right there is adjusting the width. This right here is going to adjust the height. I want to do some rotation on this. Let me rotate this thing 180 degrees, and that's going to make it point in the opposite direction. But now I can still adjust my width like this, and I can adjust my height like so. Okay? Now we're going to have to adjust the position, but for right now, I tell you what, let's take this. This might be good. I think since my height's at 20 and the rectangle, I don't know if you noticed that and when I was making these bars, maybe you saw the, some of the uh, settings I had for my rectangle. I think the thickness was 20. I think we're good with 20. Now I just want to get this positioned in the right spot. Let me save this, go back to the home screen, and now I need to slide this thing over a little bit. And again, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the video is this fine tuning here. So the thickness is okay, the height. I just want to, let's bump it over. That's way too much. So let me try 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's save this. Let's go back to the home screen. And I think that's right. I might have a little gap in there. We'll notice that in a second. Uh, now, unfortunately, I am going to have to make it a little bit taller. And the reason why is because of 
There's a lot of factors flying into this, y'all. Um, this one I probably didn't have to so much. This one I definitely have to. It's because this part of the green here and green here, the stuff getting clipped, it's a hair higher, a hair higher than what this is, if that makes any sense. I need to make this height a little bit bigger here and a little bit bigger here to make it flush, and then we'll adjust the width to make it actually look like a smooth point. As you can see, that one there looks just fine. And let me see here. Okay, so going back, not there, and going over to its shape. Let's make the height. Let's try 22, but now we'll have to adjust the position. This is where it sucks. Okay, let's bump that up one, save it, go back to the home screen. Okay, I gotta make this a lot higher. Not a lot higher, but a couple of clicks. There probably is an easier way of doing this. Um, let me get and just bump this on up to about 26. Now I know that's gonna be lower position. Let me bump this up. How about that? Now I know it doesn't look, did I get lucky? I think I did. I think from this white part to that white part where it meets the green right there, it looks like it's pretty much the same uh, thickness. Now if I adjust the width of this rectangle, we can create that, uh, what looks like a seamless um, arrow point where there's no uh, crookedness right there where the green meets the white. So why do I keep doing that? Uh, come over here to shape. Let's adjust the width. I'm gonna bump it on. Oh, I don't wanna make it wider. I wanna make it skinnier. Let's try 15. And I know I'm gonna have to move it over to the right some. Let's see what that does. Save it. Go back to the home screen. I mean, it, that is almost. Okay, now what we need to do is make that thing green to see how it really looks. So let me go into KOWP. So paint color and recently used. I'm glad I <laughs> picked it when I did because otherwise I'd have to go back and copy and paste that color code. So let's save this, go back to the home screen. All right, and now this is me being OCD. This looks really nice right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I can tell I do need to either, maybe I need to slide it over to the left because it may be thick enough. Let me slide it over to the left first. One spot. Let's save it. Let's go back to the home screen. Okay, I need to slide it back to the right. Nope, I'll tell you what. I need to make it a little bit taller, just a hair. So let's go to the shape. Let's adjust its height to 27. I need to go back to position and move it over to the right a little bit. I told you this is going to be a lot of trial and error. Okay. I need to make it even taller. I don't know if you can see it, but if you want it to look right, that's what you're gonna to have to do. Obviously, you're probably not you're not gonna to have to even do this much adjusting because yours is gonna be smaller than this anyway. Um, let me go 29. Let's see what we got there. Okay, that's just about right. But notice this right here is hanging out a little, hanging down. This is not quite flush, so I think. Let's see if we get lucky here. Let's go to, to the position and let's bump it up one spot. You know what? That's doggone close, but I'm going to go on and tell you that it's not perfect. And the reason why I need to adjust the width, the, the, see this is... I knew I was going to do this when I made this tutorial. I knew I was going to sit here and get all crazy about getting this thing uh, as perfect as I can get it. I'm going to make it not quite as wide. So let me bump this down to 14. But I know once I do that, I'm going to have to adjust. Is that good enough? <laughs> um, it looks like this part's a little bit lower. It's like it's shifted down a little bit. And I bet you I don't even want to bump it up a whole one unit. If there's an easier way of doing this, please let me know. Um, so can we bump it up a little bit? That's probably going to be too much. And if it is too much, I know how to fix that as well. So save it, going back to the home screen. All right, so it looks like we need like a... It's just off by a little bit. Get that right. I'm tired of messing with it. 
once you get that right, because this one down here, you can't even tell. I, I guess I got lucky with the numbers. You may have to even mess around with some decimals. Um, that's what I've had to do to fine tune that pointer. For example, here, uh, I'll show, I'll mention it to you one time, then I'm just going to carry on. The, I'm, I'm thinking the position, like the Y. I don't want to, like, that was too low and this was too high. So, like, 355.5, we can even do that. We'll see what happens if we do 355.5. Notice that was between 355 and 356. If I save that, go back to the home screen, and that might have done it. It's good enough, good enough here. So, finally, we got it. Boom, close enough. But now it's hanging out there. We don't want it always to hang out there. Well, what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to animate this thing in. And this is what's worked for me. I'm going to focus solely on this tip right now. Okay, so this tip, I'm going to zoom back out. As you can see, we do have a uh, that, well, you saw it a moment ago. You can barely see it right now. For animation, I'm going to go to plus. I'm going to go to animate, react on, and the same thing as always. So our toot go. And I want this thing to actually uh, scroll. Well, it don't really matter. I'm here. Okay, let's not worry about scroll per se. Let's go to ease and let's invert this thing. Now what this is going to do, now that dot is away because it's going to do it inverted. Not scroll inverted, but do the ease and set it inverted. That means whenever I trigger my animation, for example, boom, it's going to scroll it in. Bam, it's already looking good. It's already looking good. The only part I think that's going to mess up is the part where it animates, where these arrowheads are going back up first. But uh, that looks pretty good right there. The only thing we have to fix is the duration because as we adjust our times, we do want it to uh, take the same amount of time. Now let's think about this. How long do we want it to take for it to complete this animation? This scroll inverted. Now notice inverted is at, is at the ease part. We want to do the sum of GV toot speed 1 plus GV to speed two. Now this is not going to be perfect every single time, but with your arrow and your hamburger menu being so small, it's going to look perfect. Heck, you probably don't even need the pointer. I don't know why I'm getting carried away with this, but I guess it's because my animations and my shapes are so much bigger. But it's going to take the sum of those two speeds, our two number global variables, that's how long it's going to take for it to complete it. So it's going to be sliding across, sliding across, sliding across, and by the time we've completed both of those animations of it collapsing and then rotating and scrolling over, it sh that arrow pointer should be reaching the far left since we are doing a ease inverted. Let's save this. Let's go back to the home screen and let's see what we have. Boom. Now you're going to see the green thing right now. We're going to fix that too. We have to apply a clip to it. Watch this. Watch the pointer come in. Now focus your attention over here. You see that? It almost looks like that pointer is just part of this thing. That's what we want here. So now, how do we fix it from showing all this stuff over here? Notice the green, you can see the green slide off. All we gotta do is apply a clip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out of here. And what I need to do is just really copy like toot mid, that rectangle, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste. And what this needs to be is a toot point pointer clip so pointer clip good to go now this needs to be a clip obviously this is not going to do anything right now i got it above toot pointer but toot pointer clip let me go ahead and take this position and i don't want it to i want it to show over here so as long as i just take this thing and slide it over a little bit to the left something like that it's not going to show any part of the, the pointer that's above this or below this. It's going to keep it in the same width as this middle bar, the hamburger part. And since I have it over here, it's definitely going to show this on the far left side as long as we go to FX, Mask, Clip Next Module. Now if we save this, go back to the home screen, we should be good to go. Now, oh, 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 okay, that is not good at all. <laughs> Here's why. All right, we're going to have to do some more, Justin, unfortunately. Now it's clipping off the top part of the pointer and the bottom part of the pointer. So we're going to have to adjust this even more. I knew this was going to happen because I don't have everything set up the exact same way I, ha I have uh, this one set up. Trial and error, y'all. This is how I've learned it, and this is how you learn new things using trial and error, obviously. So I'm going to go to, 
I'm inside of my, what is this called? Toot pointer clip. So I want to come over here. i tell you what. I don't really, I need to position it. And basically, okay, well, I do need to make it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to make it taller, adjust its position. Um, let's go something like that. So it's going to be inside of it, but now this is going to be too much over here. So if I come and adjust the rectangle width, and basically what we want to do now is we want to position this thing to where we're right here on the edge. So I'm going to have to go to position of this clip and I'm going to slide it over to probably I need to go over 10. That might be good. Let's save it. Now this is the clip. So this is inside of this little rectangle is the only part this little green triangle is going to show. Sure, it's going to be animating over here, but we're not going to see it. And that's what we're trying to hide. So saving this, going back to the home screen, I think we did it. Okay, it's a little bit, it's a little bit weird right uh, there. You see how the, the pointer kind of goes back? Well, how can we fix it? How can we fix that? Okay, what we're going to have to do, notice the pointer comes in nicely, but it's right there where it just kind of like goes away and it looks weird. What we have to do is we have to reverse these things. The video is already 30 minutes long, 40 minutes, heck, I don't know how long this thing is. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to keep it from doing this right here. Boom, boom. What we want to do is we want it to do this. We want it to, to reverse the animations. And I've already done a video on this. What we're going to have to do is go into the delays of our hamburg or our buns, the bun pieces. So the toot top and the toot bot. Toot top, I want to go to animation and I have to do a code, the delay for all of these pieces. So for scroll, remember, initially we had no delay on the first thing where it scrolls down. Basically, I'm talking about this part right, boom, that part there. There's no delay on that. However, we do want to delay if uh, the global switch gets cut off. So this is where we got to tie in the, the global switch toot go. So if gv toot go is equal to one. Now, one means if I cut it on, I don't want a delay. But if it's cut off, I do want a delay, and I want this thing to uncollapse after the arrows have subtracted. The arrows are have retracted back in, and we've scrolled to the right. We're trying to reverse this animation. Well, the rotation and the scrolling to the left that we had occurring earlier in the video, that was based off GV toot speed two. I think this is going to work. All right, let me check that. And as a matter of fact, now let's watch what happens. Okay, did it do what I wanted it to do? Uh, we'll find out right here in a second. Let me make sure I did, did that correct. Uh, coming in here to delay. Toot go equals one. Boom, boom. Okay. Is that doing what I want it to do? Boom, boom. Did it wait? Let me check that out one more time. Yes, okay, it is waiting a little bit. Now we have to get the other pieces. So I'm gonna come down here to this delay code. I'm gonna copy this. Whoops, select all and copy. And let's back out. Let's go to the next animation. The rotate, we already have a delay set to it, right? We already have a delay set to it, the toot speed one, because we wanted to wait initially for the um, collapse to happen when we first trigger this animation, when we cut our global switch on. So when we cut our global switch on, toot go, when it's on, when it's equal to one, we do want a delay. And we want that delay to be GV toot speed one because we want to wait for that to uh that little collapse to happen which had a duration of gv2 speed one toot speed one otherwise i don't want to have a delay so basically when we cut this switch off we want it to immediately start doing that rotation i hope that makes sense check out my video on alternating animations because i do talk about this quite a bit more so i'm gonna select all i'm gonna copy 
I think. And then once I come down here and I apply that same exact code I just applied there, if I come down here to this delay, because remember, initially when we cut this thing on, we want the rotation and the scroll to the left to happen at the same time. So if I select all and I paste that same code I just copied, everything should be good on the top part. Let's see what we got here. Zoom out. Looking good. Now, this top one should fold back and scroll to the right, and then it should come back up. Look at that. Boom. All right, I love it. Now all we have to do is come down here and apply this to Tootbot. So animation, scroll. Now make sure I apply the right delay to this one. Remember, we don't have a delay right now because I've mentioned it earlier. I said it looked good, but we have to make this look real nice with our pointer. So I'm going to come here, go to my clipboard, and I want to do this one right here. I want the uncollapse. I don't want a delay when I first cut the switch on because I want it to go ahead and collapse immediately. But then when we cut the switch off, if gv 2 go is not one, we want it to wait until we have rotated and slid back to the right. We're reversing the animation here. So let me check that. And now my rotate its delay, I want to use the other code. So select all. I want it, I think I still probably have it as the first item in my clipboard. Yep. That is that the one I want? Yes. So when we cut the switch on, we want the rotate to wait until we complete the collapse. But if we cut it off, we want it to immediately rotate. So that's good. And we got one more to apply to our scroll. Go down to its delay and I can copy and paste that same code. Or not copy and paste, but you know what I mean. All right, I think we're good to go. Let's save it. Let's go back to the home screen and let's see what we got here. So that looks good. Now let's see. Love it. We pretty much got the same freaking thing on this one that we have on this one. Now you may notice, notice this is quicker, but basically this one right here, if I go back into KOWP and I go back to the globals, this is where we can fine tune toot speed one, toot speed two. So maybe I want it to collapse fast. Maybe I want the arrows to move slower. All right, let's we'll see what happens. So collapsing fast, arrows move slow. Now, did you notice the pointer? Pointer's moving away, boom. The whole point of me spending the last 10 minutes of this video when I thought I was gonna be done 10 minutes ago, which I don't mind, uh, I wanted that pointer to look good. So now, boom. Boom, look at that pointer. That pointer comes in nice to me, in my opinion. It creates the arrow point, and that was that whole little triangle deal. Now watch when we reverse it. See how the pointer goes away, and it just looks like it's blending right in with these things? And that's the type of stuff you're going to have to do as you're creating more of these material-style animations, whether it be hamburger menus or circles expanding into squares, menus popping up, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, there you have it. I'm going to shut up now because... Uh, this is probably one of the longest toots I've done in quite a while. So that's how you can create some hamburger menu animations in KOWP. And just remember, you can also uh, grab these presets over at KOWP Toots on the Play Store. And that is it for this video. I hope it helped.